In this episode, let's listen to three different audio adapters for DSLR or mirrorless cameras from JuiceLink, Ceremonic, and BeachTech. This won't be an in-depth review on any of these units, but instead it will be a comparison of the three and overall what types of results you can expect when you record directly to your camera with one of these units. Now, they're a little bit different and rather than just recite all of the specs for each of them to you here, here is a list of the specs. If you want to look at them in detail, go ahead and pause here and take a look and hopefully that's helpful for you. Now, for these tests, I'm using a Nikon D750 as my camera. I have the audio routed from one of these audio adapters into the camera, one at a time. We can only do one at a time. <laughs> and in each case, I am recording with an XLR-based microphone. So in this case right now, I'm recording with the Rode NTG2, which is a pretty common microphone out there for independent and enthusiast filmmakers. And this is recording into the Ceremonic SR Pax 2. First one you're listening to here is the Beach Tech DXA Micro Pro. In this case, we are recording with the Audio Technica AT4053B small diaphragm condenser microphone. It is a hypercardioid pickup pattern mic, and this is boom just above me right here, just out of frame. On the camera side, we're using the Nikon D750. Now, the Nikon D750, and indeed all the Nikons that I've shot, do not have very quiet preamplifiers. They tend to be actually rather noisy. So to optimize your sound when you're shooting with a DSLR and an audio adapter, typically what you're going to want to do, because the microphone inputs on DSLRs tend not to be very good, both on the Nikon and the Canon side, <laughs> is that you turn the input level on the camera down as low as it can go without turning it off. And then you use the adapter itself to do all the gain of the microphone, to do the amplification of the signal from the microphone. Next up, we have the Ceremonic SR Pax 2, which is a similar audio adapter. This one's a little bit different from the standpoint that it has two XLR inputs, plus it also has the 3.5 millimeter inputs. So it's probably the most versatile of the three. We're doing the exact same thing here, where we have the Audio Technica 4053B condenser microphone just out of the frame here. That is feeding into the Ceremonic Pax, SR Pax 2. That is then feeding a signal into the Nikon D750. We have the gain set up the same way, so on the Nikon it is one notch above off, and then all of the gaining is being done by the adapter itself, that is the amplification is being done by the adapter itself. We have the adapter set with its gain on about three, two thirds, sorry, maybe three quarters, somewhere in that range, and uh, this is what that sounds like. And this is the Juice Linked Ricky Assist 222, which is a little bit different from the standpoint that this does not have 3.5 millimeter inputs. It's strictly two XLR inputs. And then this feeds out into your camera via 3.5 millimeter output at microphone level, which is what the other two do as well. So this is uh, an example of what this one sounds like. In terms of noise performance, we did a quick practical noise floor test. And what I mean by that, we're capturing all the room tone. We are capturing the noise that the microphone makes, anything that the cable makes, and anything that the audio adapter makes and the camera makes. <laughs> In this case, we measured with the Audio Technica 4053B, which is a actually a decent quality microphone. We also measured the audio adapter into the Nikon D750. What we came up with for the Beach Tech was a noise floor of minus 71 dB. The Juice Link minus 78 dB and the Ceremonic minus 70 dB. All of these are very respectable. The Juice Link did extraordinarily well. One question might come up is which one should I buy? Well, I can't really say because it depends on a number of factors. First of all, you need to consider how many XLR inputs do you need and how many 3.5 millimeter inputs do you need. If you need two XLR inputs, that narrows it down to the Ceremonic and the Juice Link. If you need two 3.5 millimeter inputs for maybe lavalier microphones or wireless mics, you may need to look at the Ceremonic and the Beach Tech. I would just say this in terms of overall summary. I like all three of them. I think they each have their place. The Ceremonic I really liked, surprisingly. It is the least expensive of the three, and it had a great set of features. Two XLR inputs, uh, two 3.5 millimeter inputs, plus an additional 3.5 millimeter stereo input. It has probably the best metering and the best battery indicator, so you know how far off you are <laughs> before your battery runs out. The nicest display in terms of a backlit LCD display. Um, the 
potentiometer, the trim, the gain trim knobs are quite nice. They are indented a little bit and some people hate that. Um, for me, it's not a problem. They're kind of softly indented. So they have this very, very soft kind of, you can feel a tactile click, but it doesn't, you know, it's not an audible click or anything of that nature. I'm not usually mixing heavy duty while I'm recording to my camera, you know, with an audio adapter on the camera rig like that. So that's not a big deal for me. Usually I'll set it up front and I may just adjust it once during the actual shoot. So overall, really good. The one fatal flaw of the Ceremonic from my point of view is there's no headphone volume adjustment, which is really weird. I don't understand why <laughs> they did that. But other than that, it's a great little unit. The Beach Tech also very nice in a lot of ways. Build quality is again, very good. Um, it's a little bit more versatile in terms of whether you can mount it on top or beneath your camera. So that's very nice. The It has one XLR input, two 3.5 millimeter inputs, and an additional 3.5 millimeter stereo input. Then there is the Juice Link, and some of you might be scratching your heads thinking, why is the Juice Link cost twice as much? Well, <laughs> I don't know, I'm not sure. But I can say this, I do really like the recessed switches for all of the settings on the bottom of the unit. So those are the types of things you would set up before your shoot, and then they're out of the way while you're shooting and there's no chance of accidentally bumping them, which is a very nice feature. It also seems to have um, a lot of versatility. There's a lot of switches on there, so you can pretty much get things set up exactly how you need them, which is a nice thing as well. The gain trim knobs on the Juice Link are really nice from the standpoint that they're continuous. There's no indented kind of clicking between settings, just a smooth continuous turn. They're kind of stiff, um, I think in a good way, because then you're not making these erratic uh, adjustments. Um, that's a subjective thing for me that it seemed fine. The only thing I don't really love about that is that the potentiometer knobs themselves are very small. Um, and I didn't, you know, again, I'm not doing heavy duty mixing, so that's not a big deal but it is something to consider if that's important to you. And then finally, it does not have any 3.5 millimeter inputs. It's not made for that, um, just two XLR inputs. So um, again, I think each of these have their place. I think that they're all great little units. You can decide for yourself based on the sound quality, which one you prefer. And overall, I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you have not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon. Thank you.